Howdy, I'm Jason Lewis, and today on the Auto Edit Jeep, we're gonna be charging the shocks with nitrogen. Now we're gonna be moving compressed nitrogen from this big bottle I got here from my local Prax Air into this small bottle from the Power Tank's nitrogen charging kit. I've had this metal cloak suspension with the six pack shocks on the Jeep for a year, almost a year and a half now. And they recommend that you at least check the nitrogen inside those shocks at every year or so. Um, so this is not a surprise. And we're gonna go together, learn how to do this at home. Now I did have a shop here locally that would do it for $25 a port. I took one shock over to them and I wasn't real pleased with having some tech do it because he didn't do it right. He put the wrong pressure in. So this is the power tanks all-inclusive nitrogen charging kit and I really like this because it has all of the accessories that I would want to get this done here at the house and also if you wanted to take this portable this case makes this really convenient for that now yes there are cheaper ways to go about charging your shocks if that was the bottom line you could just go to what I did is I went to my local prax air you could actually buy a tank and then nitrogen compressed nitrogen refills are very cheap it's about $20 to fill this so this kit right here is a little over $500, but it has everything that I'm looking to get here. You have a way, this little guy right here is how you charge from the, from move the nitrogen from this tank to the portable tank here. And that is really nice for me because I will want to take this with me at times for things in the future. Now it has a regulator, it has a one and all, an all in one wrench kind of thing, it has this cool little strap. And then it has this, is pretty much the highlight piece for me. This little guy with the no loss chuck is really awesome. So those are the basic ingredients of this kit. Now I did order the syringe filler because one of the other things that factored into me um, kind of forking out the dough to get the high-end kit like this with all of these different uh, accessories is because not only do the shocks on the Jeep have nitrogen or nitrogen charge, it's Spoiler alert, we're gonna be hooking up the truck with some Icon Vehicle Dynamics goodness. We got some 2.5 coilovers for the front and then these piggyback reservoir shocks for the rear and these are all nitrogen charged as well. So, hey Pinto, what's going on? Come here. <laughs> this is Pinto, the dog, as you guys know. What's going on, girl? She likes nitrogen charging and awesome shocks too. Right, bud? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> <Good girl. laughs> yeah, nitrogen charge everything, Pinto. Yeah, woo! Now the process to fill this tank is pretty ridiculously easy. This thing is just a pressure fill, so you just plug it in. You have your handy dandy tool here. Put a quick tighten on that. And then you have that fitting that goes there and you just fill. And as you can see, as long as you have more pressure in this bottle, it will fill and we will just go to about, what does it look like, 1500 PSI. Okay, so now we have about 1500 PSI in our small bottle. There's no need to go any higher than that right now. I mean, we would just be able to put that up to its max pressure just to have more volume to, do, to move more nitrogen at whatever point. Right now, we're gonna check four shocks. Um, the max pressure on each shock is 150 PSI, so we'll be fine. So the great thing about this kit is that this fill is literally as easy as this. You just bleed off the extra from that, it's a one-way valve, so you can't screw this up. So now you have a bottle ready to charge your shocks. Next up, we'll just put our regulator on and get ready. And that's just as simple as. That's it. And we'll put it in this handy dandy little sling. That way we'll just have something to hang on to since the bottom of this thing is rounded and check some shocks. Always fill your shocks with them fully extended and that explains why the Jeep is on jack stands for this video. 
All right, so I got the tank just kind of secured in here. I'm kind of glad I have that little strap just as a safety. And you just put your regulator, your portable regulator on just right there. And this, one of the reasons I like the, the power tank kit is that there's a lot of cool features. I mean, it's all really high end stuff. And I mean, I get it, you're at the top tier price wise, but you get all of that the stuff that you would expect in a kit like this. So it's nice to have a fluid filled gauge. Um, so you have really accurate reading. You have this cool little knob. I'll show you what that does in a minute. And you have this kind of nice regulator here. And this is the no loss chuck. Now, yes, you could go online and get all of this. Just get a regulator and a tank from your local gas thing and just charge these things up. But your accuracy will not be as good as this. And I'll show you how that works in just a moment. So now, as you guys know, I have the metal cloak game changer 3.5 inch lift with the six pack shocks. Have I been happy with them? Yeah, I mean really happy with them. These look great. That's part of the process, you know, part of the package and they've just felt really good. They do great going down the highway and when I get feeling like I'm like a rally driver cruising, you know, hot dogging through the desert, they've done great and for the rock crawling, they're fantastic. So all around super super happy with these shocks. Now, I was told from the get-go that since you have, and it seems like with anything, anything, um, the more high performance you go, the more maintenance you're gonna have to do. I was told from the beginning that you're going to, these are nitrogen-filled shocks and you should check them every year. Now, the real reason I really decided to just take matters into my own hand and get a charging kit was because the combination of this vehicle with all nitrogen shocks and the Icon shocks for the truck just meant that I'm going to be doing this as a real thing here in the future. The Icon shocks and the instructions actually suggested after every outing in the dirt you should check the nitrogen. So that's quite a bit. These every year. So there's quite a bit less maintenance on these. Um, and I wanted to show you dirty. This is still dirty. Now I just nicked my hand. I had some stitches. I got six stitches in my finger. So I'm not going to show you the cleanup because it's messy. Um, you know, or it's just wet. So I'll show you the cleanup later, but I actually thought it would be a little bit more accurate to show you what the shocks look like, show you what the seals look like. Dirty, not touched here. Um, and they're pretty good. You know, I have had people saying, oh, well, I've heard the seals leak or whatever. Well, you know, I have about 28,000 miles on these, year and a half. Um, they've been pretty great and I've beat on this Jeep pretty hard. So let's check this one. This, this is kind of a cool feature of the power tank. So this is the no loss chuck and this is a really handy little feature. So you just put this on. Now I'll put, we'll put our one way coupler on like that. And then you literally just turn this down and that is your shock pressure. So as you can see on this gauge here, the shock pressure is at about what? What is that, 125 almost? So we're gonna just go ahead and bump that up to 150. That's where these wanna be. Now, Pinto, Pinto, what? Get them. Hey buddy. <clears throat> There's our helper there. So to go ahead and add some pressure to that, you just release the regulator here. Now there's a couple of ways. This is kind of cool. Now since this, if you wanted to, um, you, you could either just open the regulator and have pressure to the system and then you can open this needle valve here. This, is, this actually, actually offers a little bit more precision and you can now just turn this valve and you can see the pressure going up and we'll get that to all right so now i have this open and that means that i and it's not going to 150 so that means that on the regulator side i need to just add a little bit more here that's not quite as precise but here's a cool trick if you wanted to get your shocks exactly the same upper and lower which we kind of want to do especially when we have a unique situation here like the metal cloak six pack where you have an upper chamber and a lower chamber so watch this cool little trick so i'm going to actually get it to 150 with the regulator which is right about there now check this out now this is a cool little feature of this the the no loss chuck because that will actually close so now i will close this valve right here, so I know that I have 150 out of this thing, and now I could go ahead and remove the chuck, 
So I will go ahead and this relieves the, the little stem inside there. And now, you can just remove that. And what I'll do is I'll put that right on the bottom here. Okay, tighten that, just finger tighten that. We'll put our coupler on screw in the stem and so now you can see that shock was it was that's actually a really good sign this shock was at 125 upper and lower that's actually kind of really a cool sign and that also explains why the shock felt perfect this didn't actually need maintenance i'm just doing this and then here's the the finale of our trick so i haven't touched the regulator here all i should do now is open our bleed valve or this this needle valve and I should open that full and it should take this right to 150. And look at that. It does. So there you go. So now I'll know that the, the pressures upper and lower on this are exact because I didn't touch the regulator here. So this is exactly the same as the pressure that's set in the bottom. So that's a cool little trick. There you go. That's pretty handy. So then likewise here, I will just close that. Close the stem on the no, no loss chuck, I love saying that obviously, and pop this off. One shock is done. Well, actually, hold on. We need to put our caps back on. Can't be running around capless. So there you go, one shock done. I'll just times that times four and the Jeep will be ready to go. Now let me take you underneath the rear and I'll show you a little bit what's going on back there. What's up, Pince? Come on, buddy. Why do you gotta get right on the lens like that? Why do you gotta do that? You're just helping out? Well, thanks, buddy. Okay, the back is a bit of a different story since we're kind of hunkered in underneath here. But again, I kind of wanted to show you guys just road weary what this thing looks like and how these things have performed. Now, they look really good. There's no leaking. Then we got these cleaned up. Let's go ahead and charge these rear shocks and see where we're at. Now, it was in the video where I did the rear diff covers that you could actually see one of my shocks, one of these rear shocks was actually a little bit low on one of the sides and the shock had the shock body had risen up a little bit so that's the sign that one side might need some and so that's one of the reasons why the, we started this whole procedure now so we'll screw this chuck in okay see now that shock had 150 as I'll demonstrate here in a moment, an initial gauge reading of 150 means the shock was actually filled to 175 PSI. Too much for this application. And this is the shock that I paid to have filled by one of the local shops nearby. There it is right at exactly 150. And we'll go ahead and close the valve. Let's see how much it loses just by filling up this hose up to the gauge. This would be a kind of a good test right here. Okay, attach our coupler. Now we'll watch the gauge and see what it goes to. Interesting, it goes to 125 just from, we just a minute ago we had this at 150, so that's just the air loss it takes to fill this hose and this gauge to get a reading. That's a kind of a fascinating little thing to, to find out. So now I should just be able to open this valve and that will go to the pressure that we set at the bottom because we haven't touched the regulator. And, and there it is. Okay, we'll close this down. Let's close that valve, close this valve, and pop that off. Now we know 
both are at 150 and I can know I have a frame of reference so when I do put this gauge on in the future if I show 125 as my initial reading I will know that it, it, it has a bleed off of about 25 to fill the hose and get my initial reading so that's kind of interesting to, to learn all right last shock for the day let's start with the top here get our hose attached and let's see what that pressure is oh that one was at 50 now if we do the math uh, it, you know it loses 25 so that one was it's actually just a little over 50 so that one was legitimately low on the top and that would explain why that one was out of whack so let's open our valve we should immediately get that to where we want it to be and boom simple as that this is kind of fun I kind of like this all right so close that close this pop our coupler off and we'll do our last one. See, having high performance shocks can be fun. I know everything gets really expensive when you start getting shocks that are nitrogen charged and getting nitrogen charging stuff, but it seems like on every hobby, sport, whatever, the higher, the high, more highfalutin your equipment is, the more finicky and maintenance they'll need. But this is part of being awesome, I guess, and having rad stuff. It's expensive. All right, so let's see what the bottom of this one was. 100. So this shock was actually pretty low. And this, if I remember correctly, this is the side that was a little wonky in the, when we were putting the G2 diff covers in. So that would explain that. So we'll get this topped off, open our, man, I, can't, I just can't help it. Look at, I was cleaning the grease off of that thing. What are you gonna do? That looks about right. And that will finish the topping off of the shocks at 150 PSI of nitrogen. Pretty darn easy, kind of fun. And if you're going to have high performance stuff, this is how you maintenance, maintain that stuff yourself instead of having to go to your local shop like I used to. And um, I ditched, you know, I, I want to be able to have this kind of control over this stuff. So I know that I got exactly the amount of nitrogen I have in all of my shocks. I like this. And that's it. And this is yet another reason why I really like this kit from Power Tanks is that they just have this well thought out little carrying case. You have all these really high end components here. So you just close your regulator, pop this guy off. That has its own little home to live in the inside the case here. We'll put that away. Our all-in-one wrench. We can just take, let's see, our regulator off now. Our tank still has over a thousand PSI left in it. And that comes off. This goes like this. It's a little mini puzzle. That goes like that. Fold up our little carrying pouch strap thingy and that goes into its little home there and quick wipe down because that's what we do and I'll put this little guy our nozzle into it where it lives and then close that up boom you're set to go and you're now portable if you wanted to take this on the trail or out testing with you it's kind of nice order your friend's house to fill up their <laughs> shocks so this is pretty cool i really like this kit so we're going to go ahead and set this thing on the ground let's see what everything looks like so i went ahead and completed a tire rotation reattached all the rugged ridge xhd wheels put the thing back on the ground torqued the lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds and took the Jeep for a quick test drive to see how the shocks would settle in. And they all ended up looking perfect. I'm stoked to have the capability to fill my own shocks with nitrogen. And don't forget to subscribe to the AutoEdit YouTube channel and check back in for the full suspension rebuild on the Dodge Ram project. And until next time, enjoy your drive.